All right, we pick up with uh, our topic, Religion and Science. Uh, this morning, Religion and Science in Conversation. Uh, reminder, this is not religion versus science. Uh, these should remain separate categories of knowledge. Religion deals with normative questions. Theology, the truth of God. Morality, what's right and wrong. Metaphysics, what's ultimately real. Ultimate reality. Meaning, is there meaning to life? Uh, it also involves rituals and other subjective areas. Science is a descriptive discipline with descriptive questions. The natural, about the natural world in the universe, how it works at every level. Measurable phenomena, phenomena that can be tested and falsified. Thank God for science. Uh, and, thank, and, and thank God for medical science. Amen. Religion and science need to be in dialogue, not at war with each other. For example, religion cannot tell us the Earth's age, and science cannot tell us if the universe as we understand it has any meaning, let alone is there any meaning to my life. This is a different, different type of question. This is a philosophical, metaph metaphysical question. Now, scientists may say facts do not appear to suggest a creator. And some scientists have gone and say, Therefore, we are a result of a cosmic accident. All right? They may suggest that, but there's nothing in science itself that proves that we are a cosmic accident. Amen. Or there, ultimately, there is no creator. Please understand that. Uh, facts uh, of science themselves never mention God. Show me what formula, E equals MC squared, Where's, the, where's God in that? If You have to in, insert God into that. And some would say, the, where's the E? The energy. Couldn't that be God? But science itself cannot affirm what, that one way or the other. And by the way, I guarantee you, no matter what science discloses, no matter what it comes up with about the universe factually, a religious philosopher will interpret it religiously. And that includes Big Bang, that includes every fact out there. Amen. Relig religion is not going away, whether we like it or not. Now, let me make another clarification. I'm not approaching this topic from the God of the gaps position. How many have heard of that? The God of the gaps is, if science hasn't given us an understanding scientifically, of some operation in the, un in the universe or in the world, then it must be God. And so in the 19th century they say, well look, here's what's happening. Here's, here's God, and science was encroaching. And the more science we knew, the less room there was for God. Until you could explain everything, and then you, there's no need for God. I'm not, I'm not making that position. Uh, uh, yet undiscovered mysteries of the universe uh, are best understood by using the God equation. I'm not saying that. In fact, what I'm saying is the opposite position. By suggesting that we are, what we know from science actually opens the doors for God talk. Now, and by the way, I would also suggest you're not a moron if you decide to entertain such theological and metaphysical possibilities based upon the science that we know today. Now, people in our culture tend to be ignorant about both science and religion. A few atheists and religious people take ad advantage of this amalgamation of ignorance. For example, Sam Harris says, quote, if scientific theories are true, religious beliefs are false. I'm getting ahead of myself there. Let's go back to the beginning. Let me say it again. Sam Harris says, if scientific theories are true, religious beliefs must be false. Now, I would suggest this is a logical fallacy. It represents a misleading and false assumption about the relationship between religion and science. Again, science and religion deal with different questions, different types of knowledge. Both can be true in their perspective fields of knowledge. Again, you can look to science 
and physics to tell us the age of the Earth or the universe, not the Bible. But you, you can look to religion or the Bible or metaphysics to ask if there's any meaning. And what is the meaning? He also goes on to say, Mr. Harris, that science, get this one, must destroy religion. Oh, really? Really, Sam? What if religion seems to be affirming scientific theories? And by the way, there's a scientist who's saying that right now. What if scientific theories turn out to be false based upon further scientific investigation? And those new theories seem to be suggesting an openness towards religion and God. Now I'll come back to uh, the individuals that's maintaining that the new science is actually compatible with some religious beliefs. Uh, what about scientists, by the way, who practice science and faith? Professor of mathematics at Oxford, John Lennox, biologists Ken Miller and Rupert Sheldrake, and Dr. Francis Collins, to mention a few. And then, of course, we have Einstein's fam famous quote, science without religion is lame, religion without science is blind. Amen. And I think that was, <laughs> I couldn't, say, couldn't have said it better. The ancients realized something that many in our modern Western Enlightenment culture fail to appreciate. In other words, the ancients knew, for example, that building a, a pyramid, building a pyramid, and devising a calendar based upon uh, observation of, of the celestial world required one type of knowledge and method. They realized if you were going to entertain another type of question, like the meaning of life, what is good and bad, it required another type of thinking. And so they had stories, different types of stories. So in other words, they knew how to build a pyramid, how to make measurements, how to observe. By the way, we're still measuring time in units of, of 60, based upon these ancients. But it seems like we've forgotten that Different types of questions and different types of human experiences require different types of knowledge. E equals MC squared says nothing specifically about God or right or wrong or the, or the meaning of life. But it does evoke the human imagination to consider all these marvelous questions that science itself cannot answer. So why not? Let there be a dialogue, a conversation between religion and science. And by the way, should it be considered stupidity? If you want to think along those terms, I would suggest not. Christopher Hitchens wrote, we distrust anything that contradicts science and reason. Really, what about when science contradicts science? What happens when science confounds reason? And quantum physics is confounding reason. In fact, Einstein became a victim of this. He, I'll, I'll point out a little bit later, but uh, in another uh, message, that uh, Einstein could not handle what some of the new science was suggesting. He had to be proven wrong by another scientist, Niels Bohr. But he was proven wrong because he just couldn't accept what type of world quantum physics was suggesting. And again, I, I'll come back to that. Now, the implications loom large. If you're a, a religious person or if you're a person who's, who feels that uh, you really can't be religious given what we know about the world scientifically. In other words, one of the implications, are we really nothing more than cosmic accidents? I think that makes a huge difference on how I live my life and how we go about uh, an ethical code in this world. What in the great scientific theories of the modern period would confirm that we are nothing but cosmic accidents? Newtonian mechanics? 
electromagnetic field theory, Einstein's theory of special and general rel relativity, quantum mechanics? Is there anything there that absolutely proves we are nothing but a cosmic accident? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Life and the universe are more mysterious now than ever before because of science. And, and, and we were told in the 19th century that we're, uh, science was going to solve all of these great mysteries. The world, the universe, is more mysterious now than ever before because of scientific discoveries. We know how the universe began with a great explosion, but we don't know how or why that explosion occurred or why we have such a fine-tuned, seemingly impossible a combination of balanced events to get life on Earth. It would be like your house blowing up because of a, a gas leak. And you come back later, much later, and you look, and the debris from that explosion has created a park. And in that park, there are swings and a slide and monkey bars. And monkeys on those bars. Does that sound reasonable? Well, that's, the, that's essentially what we're talking about. How do you get from an explosion to life and conscious life? Science has no answer for this. In fact, Robert Lanza, the new Einstein, some are calling, somebody who thinks that Science is, has opened the door for religious uh, considerations, not Christian uh, religious considerations. But he points out this. Here's what's happened in our culture. If you repeat something over and over again, like uh, some, some, and you, you add a scientific equation, you, you throw the math in, and you repeat it over, and you repeat it over and over again, we accept it as true and absolutely true. We, we accept Big Bang, but we never question, well, wait a minute, where did Big Bang come from, and how do we explain conscious life? We just accept it as true. We've been conditioned to do that. He said, that's not really absolute truth. That's a for similitude. It appears to be true. It's not, it's not true in an absolute sense. Now, let's look at an example. How many of you believe in an independent universe out there? By independent, I mean it would exist whether you were aware of it or not. Well, let's, let, let's use something more. I'll use a, an example that uh, Robert Lance gave. How about your kitchens? How many believe that when you turn off the light, after you've done uh, ramming through the refrigerator like I do in the middle of the night, and can do it, uh, turn off the light, go back, that refrigerator is still there, that kitchen is still there. How many believe in, in, in that the universe and your kitchen exist independent of your observation of it? Quantum physics says you're wrong. Quantum physics says you're wrong. Quantum physics says it doesn't seem to really exist without being perceived. It's just energy. Perception of reality. Just some energy there. In other words, the physical universe, many are starting to say, cannot exist without being observed by humans, by human consciousness. Which, interestingly, is not a part of the material world, your consciousness. Now you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> but this is not some crackpot. This is modern physics, quantum physics. Once science debated if light was made of, of tiny particles or waves. Einstein's theory in 1905 helped explain that uh, light has both a particle and a wave characteristic. Mm -hmm. Now, how many have heard of the famous double uh, split or slit experiment. Anybody hear of that? Okay, it's been done over and over and over and over again. 
In other words, it, invo it involves putting light particles through two slits. <clears throat> and they show up on a uh, screen in the back to see a pattern. Uh, they've gotten so precise with this, they can fire one electron at a time through. Now, when you scientists look at it, it goes through a particle of, of uh, a proton, electron goes through, comes out in a, uh, a particle like a bullet, like bullets on the, on, the, on the back screen. But when it's not observed, it switches without doing anything else to a wave pattern. <coughs> so here's what scientists have known for almost 100 years now. that human observation changes the actual atomic structure of that particle. Observation. Nobody messes with it. Nobody touches it. In fact, they use the term, the electron decides huh. to change. What kind of universe are we living in? A mysterious one. They're really a mysterious one. In fact, many are saying these particles really don't even actually exist until they hit the back screen. They have a propensity or tendencies to exist. And I'm warning you, it's, it's get, they're going to get even spookier than this. And by the way, spooky is the word that physicists use, not just me. <laughs> Nothing else changes. simply by consciousness, human observation, it changes. The simple act of observation changes the physical reality of pieces of matter. How can human consciousness, the act of observing, transform reality? In fact, many scientists go further than that. It's not just transforming reality, it's creating reality. That your kitchen has to exist in your consciousness in order to exist. So what Lance is doing is putting humans back into the center of the universe to make reality complete. Not the other way around. And by the way, that sounds a lot what, like what the Bible suggests. Of putting humans at the center of creation as well as some other religions. Now, by the way, this alone opens up the door for all sorts of marvelous realities, spiritual realities. No believer should be intimidated to talk about God in a universe like this. This re religion wants to know, what does this mean? And I think we should think about that. What does this all mean for my life, for human existence, for the notion of God? Religion wants to know the meaning of what science is saying, because science cannot give us the answer right now. This alone leaves room to, comp to contemplate spiritual realities and consciousness that God has blessed us with. So I think it's time for us to have religion and God talk in conversation with science. More on this next time. Amen. Yeah.